yeah, starting this thing off, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, what are these sot songs all about? Well, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> uh, usually, we as human beings have the idea that we are um, separate from everyone and everything else in the in the world, and at some point we begin to see that that idea isn't true, that we might be something much more than we have uh, ever dream dreamt of. And um, beings that have already realized that uh, some some of them tend to help others wake up to the truth as well. And that's what satsang is. It's uh, association with truth. It's a way to see the truth of ourselves, who we really are. And to live like that as well, live mm -hmm. as that, which is not often so easy. Mm -hmm. So that's a very quick definition, but we could go into more. Mm. I think we should. So yeah. <laughs> how would you describe this, our true identity, um, wh what we really are, the truth with a capital T? How could we get into describing this? Maybe for somebody that has no idea what we're talking about right now, how would you kind yeah. of introduce someone to that? Well, first of all, it just helps to sort of be willing to challenge our ideas we have about ourselves. Um, we've already touched upon the main one, which is that we're uh, that I'm separate from you, that we're totally different entities. Um, and ultimately, that's not true. Ultimately, there's only one being here experiencing itself through billions of human bodies and an infinite number of forms. And that is very, very different to how we normally perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, a very different way to live, but nonetheless, it is the truth. It is quite shocking at first to realize that we we aren't what we we think we are. Mm. But um, naturally, humans have this drive towards evolution and want to kind of wake up to who they really are, like, you know, and answer the big questions: what, what did I, where did I arise from, and what happens after I die, and all those big ones. So, uh, in terms of how to help someone realize that it would be just um, helping them have a direct experience of who they really are, because that will change everything for them. Yeah. So pass all the labels and narratives and things of the humanly drama past all that. Yeah. yeah. It's, we get so stuck in our stories um, yeah. that we, we often, um, come to believe those so completely that it can be hard to let them go even after we've seen them not true still we might have some allegiance to them mm, allegiance to them that's, yeah that's very true i feel as though that's true in my life in some ways it certainly was for me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i like to say this whole awakening process is like a two-step process if you want to call it a process um, but in simple terms is you kind of get the glimpse you may have an experience and then you work to kind of mitigate or negate the allegiance as you spoke. You know, I see the work as kind of um, um, going with that glimpse and living in that glimpse. But I feel as though, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's not like a overnight thing, you know. So what can we do once we get the glimpse? Like, what do you say? Is there any work that we should repeat? Like, is there any practice or modality that you recommend? Usually it ends up being some amount of self-inquiry. So that glimpse can be, uh, it can just happen like spontaneously, but that's very, very rare. Um, most people will practice self-inquiry, actually directly looking to see what they are and get some kind of direct experience this is i'm actually experiencing i'm not reading about it from a book mm -hmm. or listening to a teacher i'm actually experiencing it and um we can see that through self-inquiry which is literally a looking to see who we actually are not a thinking about but a looking mm. or a meditation we can see a meditation so there's some mm. combination of that and also usually some questioning of those beliefs um that are in our old thought structure just because we've had a glimpse of who we really are it doesn't necessarily mean that the old way of thinking uh just falls away uh, as we pointed to so most people need um to really challenge the ideas the usual stories that we have that 
things about safety, things about being loved and lovable, being worthy, you know, the, the familiar usual stories that we all have but seem so real. Uh, we have to challenge those to find out if they're true. They feel true for who we thought we were. But when we start to see who we really are, we have to challenge, is that still feeling true for me now? Is it absolutely true? Mm. So usually it's uh, it's like rowing a boat with two oars. One oar is seeing who you really are again and again, and then the other oar is seeing who you're not <laughs> again mm. and again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. It's a good metaphor. I like that. Wow. Well, we know what we're not, which is just the body, right? We're mm -hmm. a little more than that, to say the least. I know this, you can't put words on it. We can truly not describe what we really are. Me and you and the listener, we are all one. How would you describe that though? Like how, how would you put labels on something that can't be labeled? You know, is, how, <laughs> is there a poetic twist that you could put? on it yeah. yeah thanks gary that's great the impossible <laughs> question <laughs> i just want to see just want to see what you say to that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's um it, the best way i could describe what we really are is uh again by kind of negation it, it's not an object it's not a thing it is um we tend to think of ourselves as an object as a as a person as a something that you can perceive but if yeah. you look at all the objects in the room where you're sitting right now, there's some um, invisible somethingness in which all these objects are appearing. And there's some background uh, in which everything is arising and we are more the background, which we tend to completely ignore because it's invisible and intangible. And all of our attention tends to go to our thoughts, our bodies and the objects just out of habit so it's wow. a usually a process of reversing importance like what if that in which all this is uh, all this is appearing is actually more important than what's appearing in it mm. and um it takes a little while to to shift that over yeah i like that though it's more so the background rather yeah. than like the objects yeah that's really that's succinct i like that a lot We've been taught to value that which moves and changes more than that which is just here and isn't shouting for attention or anything. So at first when I had that experience of what I really am, it's just this, it seemed like blank, empty nothingness. It didn't seem exciting at all. And mm. it was a while before I realized that might be the most important thing here. Mm. So, mm. Yeah. How do you reconcile that? Right. Again, going back to, I like to try to describe things for people that have no idea what we're talking Absolutely. about. Yeah. So how can you reconcile that this is the most important thing, yet it's nothing? Uh, so like, why is this the good news? I guess is a different way to ask. Well, that's a good, a good way to put it. The good news is uh, if you realize that you are this background, for want of a better word, you don't uh, have any fear anymore and you lose your capacity to suffer because mm -hmm. this cannot die. It was not born. Yeah. Only bodies are, are born and dying. And in a certain way, everything's everything is being born and dying. A thought has a finite existence, just like a planet. But this, that we really are, whatever that is, is beyond um, those kind of categories. It yeah. never arrived. You could ask, how long has the spaciousness been here that the universe appeared in? And mm -hmm. without the universe there, the, the how long has just got no no meaning, has it then? Mm. So yes. the major benefit is, is realizing that you're not going to disappear when the body goes. And um, then you can also enjoy your human existence while it's here and... Mm. Um, not be suffering. The most important thing is you can't suffer from there. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's definitely important. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to disappear when the body goes. That's it. That's the good news, truly. That's huge, yeah, because uh, most people 
I guess like myself, I was terrified. In the background of my whole existence as a child, there was this fear that I could never put my finger on. And it just got clearer and clearer over my sort of teenage years and 20s that at some point I'm going to cease to exist. Yeah. And that was just terrifying. Mm. And it drove me to kind of really um, want to understand who I really was. Like, is there anything beyond death? And, you know, that, that kind of search um, to be free of fear, mm. to not have any fear, um, which is possible for human beings. But... Um, only by recognizing who we actually are. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle in that way. Absolutely. It's funny though, because it's a miracle, but yet it's not because it's the most natural thing. Like who we really are is actually not a miracle at all because it always was and it always will be. So yeah. maybe the miracle is in being aware of it, becoming aware of it and seeing it. But, I mean, you don't have to see it. It's always a miracle, no matter what, you know. That's the thing. So I guess this whole process, the spiritual process, awakening, enlightenment, is being able to remember, being able to see this, and uh, continually see this, and then thus we don't die and we don't suffer. Mm. Yeah. Now, how would you write, uh, well, not recommend, how would you describe how we don't suffer from that um like how how do we let go of the ails of the human body once we know who we are or uh yeah how would you describe how we negate suffering from realizing that we are the infinite that's a good question it's um <clears throat> the the reason we suffer if we actually look at what suffering is is the stories that we're holding on to about ourselves, about life, about the world, everything. And we're never suffering from what's actually occurring. We're suffering from our resistance to it, our pushing mm -hmm. against what's happening, mm -hmm. our sto the stories that we believe. Um, so even if our body is in pain or you know something uh, happening to the body, it's not the pain itself that is suffering. It's the resistance to it. Yeah, I see. And this. having realized who you really are, that infinite formless nothingness that is um, the intelligence behind all existence, none of those stories apply to it. It's it's just here and it's it's just being itself and it doesn't need to get anywhere it doesn't need to prove its worth or anything mm. it is the source of all existence so it doesn't even need to find love it is the source of love mm. and um there's a wholeness and a completeness and a deep peace that comes from recognizing that 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 is who you are and then yeah. these stories it's it's clear that our mind is talking to who we thought we were and has actually no no relevance to who we actually are this this one being mm. so suffering ceases because you can't believe any thoughts at all then because that's the gradual process for most of us we don't just go oh this is what i am and uh now i can't believe it it'd be nice if it happened like that mm. very mm -hmm. very rarely but for most of us we have to look at the stories like we were saying yeah the suffering stops when you realize no story has ever applied to you. Hmm. Mm. Now, would you say our suffering is what brings us to that perspective or possibly brings us to that? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very rare being who just sort of says, you know what, my life is really good, but I really want to find out who I am. Um, most of us <laughs> arrive in satsang with, you know, very yeah. traumatized, very dysfunctional life, very... Um, uh, feeling very um, low self-esteem, maybe even self-hatred, you know, because we just haven't been able to make this life thing work so well for us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what the sages say. Suffering brings us to God in one way oh, or the yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange that we only seem to want to grow when we're suffering. At least at first, um, 
we need that some kind of friction or something in our life to to force us to evolve. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I see it as just like a big lesson for all of us or an opportunity, maybe an opportunity that we can take to kind of transmutate that suffering into growth, like you said. Yeah. And I think that this, there's a clear distinction that needs to be drawn between pain and suffering because pain will arise, right? But that comes and goes. The suffering is when we resist the coming mm -hmm. or, or the going. So that's the big difference I think we can draw here is the drama still goes on in the humanly story, yet it's, uh, I guess it's a little bit lighter, maybe. It's essentially none of it's real. And I know that se may seem a little shallow to say, but it's none of it's real because it's all temporary. Really, all the stories, all the narratives within our life, it's all going to come and go. As Ramana Maharshi says, let what comes come, let what goes go, and see what remains. Absolutely. Yeah. See what remains. Whether we like to admit it or not, everything that's happened since this body arrived is not ultimately true. Mm -hmm. It can be enjoyed once we realize it's not ultimately true. We actually end up finding ourselves, well, in my own experience, I feel more at home in my life than I ever have, more comfortable, more able to enjoy it without this suffering and fear in the background all the time. Yeah. But ultimately, knowing it's, it's temporary, like you said. Knowing it's temporary actually makes it all that much sweeter. Mm. Like you said, yeah. you can actually yeah. enjoy the movie of your life, the game of your life. A little bit more, a little bit more ease, less attachment, just uh, more lightheartedness, less seriousness. Definitely. Yeah. I notice, I don't know about you, maybe this is just how my mind works, but I notice a sort of gesture-like archetype, uh, sort of comicalness to this universe. I like to say... You could categorize God, which you can't, but just for my my saying here is God is like the ultimate comedian, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I notice joke after joke after joke for some reason. I don't know. Maybe that's just how I work. I've always been jester-like, so. I've uh, Let's go ahead, sorry. certainly laughed a lot more, a lot more. I've yeah. never had more fun than since sort of really beginning to see who I actually am. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the the... Of course, it's not funny at all while we're stuck in our uh, illusionary self. But afterwards, it, it's um, it's even quite um, hilarious how we actually managed to believe we were separate beings. Like, how did we pull that right. off? You know, how did we pull that off? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. How would you answer that? How did we pull that off? How did we get so uh, just uh, thick, thick-minded? You know, so dense, like. How would you say we even ended up there in the first place? I think it's I think it's a combination of um, the an infinite self, the one being being so powerful. It is the source of everything, and therefore anything it believes, it's going to experience that as if it's really real. Mm -hmm. So it's experiencing this idea that it's a separate person moving around in the world. With, and it has such reality to that. It imbues its reality upon that experience. And so it wouldn't even think to even question that because it seems so real and it keeps re um, experiencing it. And everyone else is also agreeing that they're separate beings and mm. we're all reinforcing each other's uh, dream that's going on. I think ultimately it stems from when... Um, when the real self appears as a human being, it has the capacity to think then and discern and it experiences opposites. And it, you can't really do that in any other form it's appearing in as an animal or a plant, at, at least only a rudimentary sense of opposites. Mm -hmm. Human beings, we have this capacity to think and we somehow decide that physical reality is more real and important than anything else. 
Yeah. And so we ignore everything else, the background, and focus only on the objects, or the the moving and the changing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we get obsessed with them then. Yeah. Yeah, we get obsessed. <laughs> yeah. It's a detangling of our obsessions with separation. Yeah, with distinctions. This, not that. Yeah, I think. Mm, the ego, pretty much what you just described is the ego or what can be labeled as the ego, our sense of separate self. It's almost, I was going to say it's needed, it's definitely not needed, but it seems like it is for the one self to remember itself. It has to get lost, it seems. Getting back to the sense of miracle, it wouldn't be such a miracle if we didn't get lost in the first place, mm -hmm. right? One of those strange paradoxes, right? Yeah. It's like, would it be so grand if it was always grand? Mm -hmm. I think we always thought, we, we already talked about that, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. And that, that's why awakened beings generally aren't, except teachers uh, who are teaching, and not, not all awakened beings teach, but... They're not running around shouting, I am the self, the infinite self, because it's just <laughs> obvious and normal and how it's always been. You know, it's it, it really is normal and obvious then. Ne never dull and never taken for granted, but, but just why would you need to speak about something that you've always been? Mm. You know, it's no no big deal in that way, at least. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like you trying to evangelicalize it like that is ruining ruining the show <laughs> <laughs> don't ruin it for people man i don't know <laughs> well i would say because i was guilty of it i may even still be guilty of it but back when i first got glimpses into my infinite awareness into the true self um i did realize that suffering was a little less i did realize um that we don't actually die and that mm -hmm. is the gospel. That is the good news. So seeing myself and others, because that's really how it is, I wanted to bring those others to the other side, per se, to the promised land. So I figured that it was just as easy to say, hey, man, don't you realize you're <laughs> God, you're it. And, you know, people would look at me strange and just it wouldn't compute. So, yeah, the point of the story is, I think, doing that there's good intentions in it there's good intentions in you know trying to tell people that hey man it's all good it's all infinite awareness there's no such thing as suffering blah 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 whatever you want to say but it's not that easy to um to spread the good word i guess one has to be open to it it seems you know it's like a two-way street to get the transmission and i think the openness, which we've already talked about, comes from suffering. You have to think that there has to be another way. There has to be more to life than just, you know, the American dream. <laughs> more to life <laughs> than just the, the human drama, like we talked about before. And then that's when I think, you know, you could guide somebody to this infinite awareness, their, their true self. Um, but yeah, either way, we are the true self. It's just a matter of seeing it or not. So I, I had that idea last night. I was like, you know, there's no point in drawing a distinction between enlightened beings and non-enlightened beings or awakened people and not awakened people because everyone is technically awake. And I was like, well, what if the people that I deem as not awake are actually more awake than the people that I see as awake? Because they're so awake, they're so in it, that they're not even thinking about, they're not even thinking about being awake or not. It's kind of like a tree, you know, like a tree is naturally enlightened. A tree doesn't think I'm enlightened or am I enlightened or, you know, it doesn't even have that quandary. A tree is just naturally enlightened. The earth is enlightened. It's just being itself, right? Yeah, yeah. it's just being itself. Isn't that the essence of what or the hell we're talking about right now of enlightenment is just you're just residing 
seeing and remembering yourself at all points, always, always and forever. So, yeah. yeah. In one way, I can see why speaking about this and guiding people to this is beneficial. And, um, you know, it can actually help people. But in another way, it's like everyone's enlightened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so actually, let me ask you that one. What What is the purpose of us talking like this and you doing your sot songs and trying to guide people? Is it that? Is it just trying to kind of plant a seed in somebody in fertile soil? Um, yeah, when I first began uh, teaching, um, I was like, you know, like you were saying, I'm going, I'm going to wake everybody up. You know, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do this, and um, I tried to tell everyone around me, my my family and everybody, you know, that, hey, I've, you need to know this. And it was astonishing that um, not everybody wanted to hear about it, and some people were even freaked out. You know, like, <laughs> um, so there's a realization of. Um, Okay, let's uh, respect everybody where they're at. That is also being the infinite self. If if the infinite self appearing as that person still wants to uh, entertain those thoughts, that's totally to be honoured. But it also makes it special and nice when somebody is ready to come out of that. And uh, that's really, we could say that satsang is really um, the self helping itself to recognize itself you know mm. we imagine mm. there's a teacher that's outside of us that's helping us but it's really like now it's just the one being talking to itself mm -hmm. and is there a purpose to that I, I haven't really found one except maybe for joy you know we could say to help each other wake up more but even that's stretching the truth a little bit really there is no purpose behind this conversation it's just happening isn't it just unfolding yeah that's very true <laughs> it's just unfolding <laughs> here we are how do we end up here exactly oh man yeah i wonder that i'm like what is what is the purpose of this i just i think you hit the nail on the head just joy i mm -hmm. imagine you just simply enjoy going on the microphone and the camera and speaking to people and it just I seems to be well. what wants to happen you know it's yeah. um I, I used to think, okay, I'm, I'm hosting satsang to help people wake up. But when I came from there, it just didn't help at all. It, yeah. In fact, it seemed to slow down what wanted to happen. The so irony. I had to come to it open and fresh. And yeah. what if this is just what wants to happen? Ah, uh, yeah. Now, would you say that what wants to happen... Um, once we get the glimpse and live on this wavelength a little bit, sort of changes in our life, as in there is a different will that comes about. So less of an egotistical, competitive will. And what wants to happen is more of like a universal will toward maybe compassion, love, cooperation. You know what I'm getting at? Absolutely. Um for me, it shifted over from, because I was always very competitive when I thought mm -hmm. I was a, a someone, mm -hmm. terrified of failure, all those things. And um, it's just gradually shifted over to, like exactly like this, like there's no purpose behind what we're doing here other than to to maybe connect and enjoy the conversation. Yeah. And my kind of whole life has just gradually changed over to I just really want to connect with the people that I'm with. I really want to meet them authentically. Mm -hmm. You know, that's there's a richness there or something, right? Yeah. And very simple in that way as well. Mm -hmm. But so fulfilling to sometimes you might speak to someone, it's the first time they've ever really felt listened to. Mm. Ever. That's you know, powerful. It's, it's a miracle that in itself, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Wow. I never thought of it like that, but yeah, that's that's very powerful. The first time anyone's really ever been listened to. Some and, of the most yeah. profound conversations I've had have been in very ordinary settings like the store or, mm. you know, just supposedly random strangers, but there's just a, a meeting, even just for a few minutes, and it's authentic and it's real. Mm -hmm. 
And there's something so beautiful about that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what life's all about. If there is some kind of purpose. That know. would have to be it, surely, if there was yeah. a purpose, yeah. Yeah. This the simple connection with another that isn't really another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a beautiful, I think once you've sort of started to recognize who you are, you've probably experienced it yourself that people feel they, they might not know consciously what's different about you, but they can just relax a bit more with you and mm. just um, let their guard down a little bit or or totally, you know, just there's a, perhaps the first time they can feel safe and comfortable, even just for a few moments, it's something that they might not ever experience before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I have noticed that as well. I try not to note that because then that can become another ego trap. Like, oh, here yeah. I come. I'm going to comfort oh, yeah. this person. But like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Had mm -hmm. to throw it out too. Mm -hmm. And then when you get in uh, the presence of another person like that, you can have a very beautiful, open conversation, which I think is kind of meta, but I think this is kind of what we're doing right now and what I like to do with people. And uh, yeah, there's just something so special about just two people opening their hearts. One person for sure. One person can open another person's heart, but when you come just two people open, two, three, four, or however many, more the merrier, I guess. When you just come into a collective opening of the heart, um, something just so sweet, so purposeful if there is a purpose like we said and just um yeah just that's that's it man that's it it's just uh you kind of like lose yourself i find myself just um like if this whole thing is just a remembrance of the oneself when i'm engaged in an open-hearted conversation i lose myself to the other person like i lose <laughs> that sense of gary to the other person and uh that's a sadhana in that way it's so special absolutely mm. And it's, it's like the highest form of love as well, right? To mm -hmm. to not be, like right now we could both be thinking as we're listening and thinking about what we want to say next to each other and that would just get in the way of something that's just happening authentically. And um, yeah. it's like we both just want to actually be here and meet this authentically, whatever this is. And it's a, it's a form of love in a way, isn't it? It is. <laughs> like I just I don't want to try to even make you like me or anything I just I'm quite happy to just uh, let you be who you are and and discover who that is mm. yeah mm -hmm. wow this is powerful stuff <sighs> that's what life's all about it's love right that's what it comes down to yeah and we've been loving as much as we can but just finding letting go of those conditions, you know, I'll like you if you like me and, yeah. you know, if you make me feel special, I'll do the same for you. And mm. and this costs nothing wrong with that, but it's just nice to not, to just be able to let all that go and mm -hmm. just be whatever I am in this moment. If that's scared, I'll be scared. If it's agitated or happy, I'll just, I'll just be that. Mm -hmm. Unconditionality. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. That's what I like to say God is, even though you can't say what God is. But if we can feel an essence of that in our life, it's unconditional love. So if anyone's wondering, like, what is God? How do I see God? How do I, how do people say they've seen God? What is it? It's unconditional love. Whatever brings one closer to the sense of unconditional love, maybe it's your parents, your children, a friend. I don't know, a hobby that you have, unconditionality, whatever brings you into the unconditionality, not toward the person, but like in the moment, in, in, that, mm. in that awareness of the moment, you just feel this, like you said, just a, a sense of ease maybe, an opening in that mm. unconditional love, that will bring you to God. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I like that word ease. It's, it's just... It's ease, isn't it? It's comfort, it's naturalness, mm. spontaneous, whatever. We could put words to it, but Many there's an intimacy then with all of life, all of our relationships, everything that we encounter. It's just, I don't want to be 
thinking about this moment. I want to be experiencing it. Mm, yeah, that's good. You don't want to be thinking about it. You want to be experiencing it. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of occurred to me at one point that, and it seems kind of obvious now, but it wasn't then that like, I can't do both at the same time. I can't really be here. Mm. And also thinking about what this is at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, because thinking is either in the past or the future, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Truly experiencing is, there is no, it's just, uh, it's just the immediate felt presence of the moment. Yeah. yeah. This, whatever this is. I, don't, I still don't know what this is, but I know it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's we could call it God or self or whatever, but it's just whatever it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Mm hmm. Damn. Yeah. Sometimes I get in moments and I can't do anything but tear up. I'll say it on the mic. I don't care. But sometimes it's just like, man, this is this is truly beautiful. It's just it's like art for art's sake. You know, like our life becomes a sort of art or well, it always was an art. But like seeing it, you see the art more and more and you see how beautiful it is, the tapestry of our lives. And sometimes, yeah, it's just like wow and it's true you know i feel like it's hard to convey with words us in conversation and i recognize somebody in the future is going to be listening like what are these people what are, what are they talking about maybe <laughs> maybe maybe people are on a wavelength hopefully they are most likely they are but if they're not it's hard to like it's hard to convey the beauty of what this is whatever that is like you said it's hard to convey that just with words i remember one day I was in the kitchen here and I was making myself a, a tea and um, I just had this, the first time it happened, I was just looking at this tea bag, this used tea bag, and I was just falling in love with it. <laughs> and I was just crying and crying. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Mm. And I mm -hmm. thought either I'm going completely insane or I'm really starting to see who yeah. I actually am, you know. <laughs> um, and yeah. I know what you mean, those moments of, the, the sense of beauty and wonder of it all is always there, but sometimes it's just like so intense that all you can do is cry. Yeah. Yeah. And it never ends. <laughs> That's the thing is it never ends. The wonder is continuous. It's a never ending mystery. Yeah. It can never be solved really. But that's the good news is that it's a <laughs> mystery. Imagine if you could like get to a point where like, I got it. I got it all figured out this is it like no yeah. like you get to a point of this is it when you realize oh i'm never going to figure out what it is it's the paradox it's the irony it's, but yeah man it's delicious that right because you can mm. you can never fully know who you are but you can discover yourself deeper in every moment every like moment. richer and deeper and fuller yeah. and it never ends ever yeah. wow yeah <sighs> never ends yep that's the beauty. Hmm. Ah, you're a special one, Helen. Thank you. Good, good talk. This this is great. <laughs> I hope you're enjoy. I'm really enjoying it. It's it's so nice to just have a organic, spontaneous conversation. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. I get the points in these talks, like right now, where I'm just like. Just close our eyes and sit. <laughs> yeah, just close our eyes, sit. <laughs> We'll look out the window, watch the trees blow. You know, this is like, what more do I have to ask? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to wrap it up because we got a little bit of time, but it's like, I don't know. You know? <sighs> Life is beautiful, everybody. It really is. And um, I guess I just uh, encourage everyone listening to this to, Go and listen to your talks because you obviously have an understanding of what this uh, is all about. And you can definitely guide people to the understanding. Um, you have a very, you have a sort of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, just a resonance. I have a resonance toward you, at least. Thank you. I, I don't know if everyone else will, but I think a lot of other people will resonate with you because that ease, I feel as though just flourishes from you like you just have a sense of ease in your spirit i can feel it through the screen it's 
It's quite funny um, in a way because as a child and a teenager and even into my, I'm 49 now, um, even into my 30s, I was desperately shy. And when this kind of teaching stuff started to happen, there, I resisted it completely. I did not want to do it. And certainly would have, this would have been my ideal nightmare as a, as a, a separate person. Yeah. I find this kind of thing flowing like this and it's, it's, um, I'm still quite shy underneath it all. Uh, so you might, may or may not believe that, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, the, the truth is there's always this sense of ease with truth. Right. And I felt that mm. as we were saying before, before we started recording, I think, you know, when I checked out your stuff, I just felt that same sense of ease and resonance. And that's, that's why it felt really good to, to do this. So mm. I always go to go with that feeling because it's it's always a sign to me that something good's going to come out of it. Mm. Amen to that. Yeah. yeah, flow with the ease, go with the ease. Yeah, yeah. and that just becomes clearer and more obvious. I think the more the more you sort of settled into this reality of of who you are, that 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 way forward that's with the greatest ease is just clearer and clearer. You can just kind of feel it, right? It's mm um less and less trying to figure out what you should do and more just yeah this is this is the way it's going to go yeah yeah exactly less inertia mm. and a solid discernment i feel yeah yeah effortless living it seems i feel that it's kind of um Quite funny now, but it wasn't at the time that after all these years of meditation and spiritual practice I've done, I've finally arrived back at where my cat has always been, you know, <laughs> just <Your> effortlessly <laughs> peaceful, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cats are definitely enlightened. If there is an animal that is enlightened, maybe all of them are, but cats mm -hmm. are like, sometimes I'm like, they know. They know something we've done, yeah. right? <laughs> and even the dogs as well, um, many animals, but dogs, you can see the joy you can see mm -hmm. the joy we were talking about, the zest for life, mm -hmm. the unconditional love and acceptance you were talking about as well, right yeah. there. Animals are definitely very spiritual, for sure. Yeah. I know in Buddhism, they describe mm -hmm. as like, if you don't follow the path, you may be reincarnated as an animal. Sometimes I'm like, that wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, <laughs> if I could be a cat, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be so bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like They seem very enlightened. It doesn't seem as hard as it is to be a human sometimes. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Let me ask you about that one though. What is your inspirations or uh, who are your teachers? Because I know you have the Om symbol, you have Buddha, and I'm pretty sure is that Shiva, you know, mm -hmm. right there, that little thing. Yeah. So, you know, he seems to be a combination of Buddhist, Hindu. Uh, do you have any specific teachers or teachings that you recommend the teachers i really followed i only actually sat with a teacher twice um really because my one of my big sort of karmic patterns was finances couldn't afford to mm. to go but um ajishanti for sure definitely hugely influenced um mm. uh I, I was at a stage in my awakening where i'd got it here but it just wasn't really like moving down to the heart it yeah. was a lot of wisdom but compassion and love wasn't there and sort mm -hmm. of meeting Ajishanti it, it just there was this massive heart opening and I cried for about five hours wow in real life you met him yeah yeah in wow. London um That's cool. and it changed it just brought it down to a very lived real compassionate level uh Muji um Eckhart Tolle I've got a whole bookshelf of um I've just tried to um, over the years immerse myself in as many different teachings teachers religions you know everything uh, that had a little bit of truth in it or a lot and from there so I, I could it would take me now to list literally everything from ramana to meister eckhart and mm -hmm. everything in, in between um mm -hmm. the upanishads uh, bhagavad gita um anything and everything so uh kind of what ends up coming out is a mishmash of everything <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to say the truth is one and the wise call it by many names. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've always kind of had this urge to um, simplify, make it simpler. 
yeah um uh, and pra- as practical as possible you know so that's that's uh something that frustrated me along my own journey was um somebody just tell me what do I actually do like what does it mean to stay as the self or I'd listen to Nizza Gadal to talk about staying in the I am and I'm like what on earth does that actually mean mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so that's that that was the and still is the driving force behind the teaching I guess just to try and simplify it mm. yeah <clears throat> it is simple though that's the thing it really is yeah. so simple sometimes it's hidden in plain just sight. This. Just yeah. this. <laughs> just this. Just this. The last talk I had, we got onto a point of just this. So interesting that we brought up just this because it is. It's just, just this. As I'm saying this, the the sun's coming out in the window across. So you'll probably see the. <laughs> That's yeah. a sign. The light. Perfect. Yeah. The light's coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. You know what, Helen? I think we can probably wrap it up at just this. I don't have anything else to say. Um, it feels like a good place to wrap it up. Just yeah, this. get you out of the sun. <laughs> I love it, actually. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it feels good. Um, do you have anything else you want to say? Any last words for the pod? Gosh, I just um, want to say, you know, if someone's listening to this and they feel like they're not going to be able to to do it to achieve it to recognize themselves i think it's just important to remember that you are already this so you can't fail because for me that was the thing that held held me back for so long and i see it in everyone self-doubt can i actually wake up to the truth can i actually get there and if you had to um change something over maybe you could fail but you're only seeing who you already are Mm -hmm. and i think remembering that was a lifesaver for me because then you just it's like looking in the mirror you look in the mirror enough times you know it's clear who you are Mm. it's not something you have to achieve Mm -hmm. amen to that well said you can do it because you are it yes (laughs) absolutely well thank you so much for coming on here helen i really appreciate you sharing your time effort and wisdom with me thank you for having me i really really enjoyed it for sure for sure. Keep doing your thing. And uh, I wish you all the best. Seriously, I wish you all the best. Um, peace and love to you. And Thank peace you. and love to anybody that listened this long. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>